Hi everyone, welcome back to my page. My name is Dr. Kiruka Bridget at Obi Dry Talks with Dr. Adazaya. Today we'll be discussing recurrent miscarriages or recurrent pregnancy losses. I'm a consultant obstetrician gynecologist. Please, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube page, subscribe at Obi Dry Talks with Dr. Adazaya. Follow me on Facebook at Obi Dry Talks with Dr. Adazaya. I'm also on Instagram and TikTok with the same name. So let's go on. What is recurrent miscarriages? Recurrent miscarriages is said to happen when a woman has lost two or more consecutive pregnancies without a live birth. It can also be called recurrent pregnancy losses. And what is miscarriage? Miscarriage is said to happen when a baby has not reached viability. When a baby, uterus, when a baby dies in the womb has not reached the age of viability. And different countries have their different age of viability. In Nigeria or some other countries in the tropics, you have their age of viability to be 28 weeks. That is exactly seven months of that pregnancy. So if you carry any pregnancy that has not reached seven months and that pregnancy is lost, something happens to that pregnancy, it's actually said to be miscarriage in our context, Nigeria. But in other, other developed countries, depending on their savage rate, what they can salvage of any baby delivered, some have 20 weeks as their age of viability, some have 24 weeks as their age of viability. So, depend on the country that you are. But if that pregnancy has not reached viability, it is said to be a miscarriage. And when you have had that two or more consecutively without a live birth, without you giving birth in between, it is said to be a recurrent miscarriage or a recurrent pregnancy losses. There are different causes to this. There are different causes to this. The commonest cause of miscarriage is genetic abnormality. This genetic abnormality may be in any of the parents, maybe with the man or the woman, whoever that is contributing to or in the baby. And this is not affecting that pregnancy. So when a baby, when the uterus, when the uterus is carrying an abnormal baby, the DNA of that baby has a problem. The best way nature does it so that you do not bring a child that suffers to the world is to cause miscarriage to happen. Now, there are a lot of things that can cause, if it becomes recurrent, it means that it is that genetically there is something wrong with either of the partner or there is a translocation happening in that baby. So, genetic problem is the first cause of recurrent miscarriages. Now, the second one includes uterine abnormality. In some women, when the uterus is developing, when the uterus, then the baby, a baby girl is in the womb, the uterus starts developing. Some abnormal things may happen, some things may go wrong, and it will make that baby to have abnormal uterus. That is the womb, is the uterus. So, some, the commonest is septic uterus. You see, the uterus outside is okay, but inside there is a, sep there is a septum. Something is dividing the uterus into two. And so, even if a pregnancy occurs, it will not be able to grow. So the next thing, it will shed, it will get lost, to come out as a miscarriage. So septic uterus. Some others, you can see a uterus that is divided into two, with two horns. You see, with two biconnect uterus, they will have two horns, two different horns, and that pregnancy may not last long in it. You have others that have been recorded to her. This side of the uterus is not good. The other side is good, just as I'm showing you the diagram. is a problem too. Then, you have someone that is didactic, completely divided, just with a stalk in between, just in the diagram above. So, that's another cause. So, but the commonest cause of recurrent miscarriages is septic uterus in the context of uterine abnormality. That's when the uterus have a problem. Now the second and the third thing is if there's a problem with the cervix, cervical structure, remember that the cervix is the mouth of the womb. So if there's any problem with the mouth of that womb, anything causing difficulty in holding pregnancy, we'll call it cervical incompetence. So you see as the pregnancy, this one passes three months, as the pregnancy is growing, the cervix starts giving way. I will not be able to carry that pregnancy. So if there's anything that has happened to that cervix, either congenitally or acquired, maybe through uh, doing some instrumentation, through trying to terminate pregnancy before now and uh, into instrumentation that actually cause fibrosis, that, you, that service may become 
difficulty in may have difficulty in carrying pregnancy and so when the woman is about you see the, the as the as the pregnancy the baby would, would have grown though people would have seen the pregnancy next you see that the woman starts entering into preterm level or pre viable level and the next thing that pregnancy it, it gets rid of most times they grow in they come in descending order as the utero the, the woman has lost the pregnancy has become big let's let's assume 28 weeks before and this time it is um, 20 weeks just like that it will then the pregnancy will get lost so those are the causes of uterine pregnancy cause for recurrent miscarriages now let's go to endocrine factors uncontrolled diabetes mellitus for a woman that has diabetes mellitus that is not well controlled it will lead to recurrent miscarriages because it will affect the pregnancy from growing now we have what we call thyroid diseases there's this thing that grows here some people will have it and that hormone will not allow pregnancy to stay when it, when the woman has that thyroid disease it's a cause of um recurrent miscarriages we have other things like Asherman syndrome when there is adhesion in the uterus inside the uterus maybe from infection in the uterus that is the womb or from instrumentation or from surgeries and the endometrium that is where the baby lies in becomes matted together there's no space even the little space will just have a baby and the next thing it will not be able to expand and so it comes out as a miscarriage when there is presence of tumors, huge tumors, where the baby lies, that is in the endometrium, inside the womb, and you have big fibroid or you have big polyp inside the womb, it will affect the baby from growing. You know, the space is now small, and so the baby that is growing and these tumors are fighting for space. And because these tumors are constant, they can easily push out this baby. And several times, this woman will try to get pregnant, and it happens again and again. It leads to recurrent miscarriages or recurrent pregnancy losses. Now, if we go on, we have something we call polycystic ovarian syndrome. I've discussed this before. Increased level of those hormones may affect the pregnancy, and the person will come with recurrent miscarriages. Others include what we know as antiphospholipid syndrome. It's an autoimmune disease affecting blood clotting system. And so in this type of people that have it, it will lead to some form of thrombi behind the placenta. You know, the blood behind the, the blood circulating around the placenta will be insufficient. And that pregnancy will not grow. And the person will come with recurrent miscarriage. Cigarette smoking affects the luteal phase and may not allow pregnancy, may not allow the hormones that keep pregnancy to work perfectly well. So if someone is trying, is having recurrent miscarriages and the person is smoking, the person is advised at least to stop because it can affect the pregnancy and may lead to recurrent miscarriages. Then in most some women that have recurrent miscarriages, you find out that then, you can't even say that this is the reason why she's having that recurrent miscarriages. And so what do you do? It's for you to follow up and watch so these are the causes of recurrent miscarriages amongst others now what are treat the treatment options the treatment depends on what is found so if i see a woman that has recurrent miscarriages and you come to the hospital please you are expected to be patient with the health workers the doctors the nurses because you have to take enough history it is from the questions that you are asked that will be able to say that these are the causes we think is the cause of that recurrent miscarriage. So we're going to take a detailed medical history from the t from even before you got married to when you started having pregnancy, started having um, started trying to get pregnant, and the, how the losses came about. So you you may be asking some questions and you may think it's annoying. Please bear with the health workers because all these are aimed to finding what the cause of that recurrent pregnancy loss is and trying to tackle it. Then we are going to do an examination. We may even do a pelvic examination because if you have a tumor inside your, your uterus, inside your womb, that is fighting for space with your baby, it will show. So we will need to do an examination, check your pelvis, and see if there's anything wrong. So these are the part, one of the things 
the things we do. Then from examination, we can go on to collect your blood for some tests. Antiphospholipid syndrome, some other tests for hormonal uh, acid. So these are we can go on to collect. We can even send you for imaging, ultrasound, so that if you have any, any abnormality in the uterus, it will be detected. So we do that. It's, it's actually tax scheme for both the health workers and the patient that is involved. We can even send you to, for genetic counseling. We can even collect karyotype. We can do karyotyping on you to be sure that you or your partner does not have any genetic problem. That is affecting that pregnancy. That any time you get pregnant, you get lost. So these are the things we do. And treatment depends exactly on what is causing it. So when you come, I will find out and pinpoint what is causing it. We'll be able to treats you according to what is causing it. If it is a luteal phase defect, we'll take over the luteal phase, merely you miss your period. We'll take over and make sure that until placenta takes over before we we'll allow the pregnancy to continue. So we'll do that with the use of drugs. These are the things that are done in the hospital. It is not with the use of herbs. It is, it is evidence-based medicine. So if you know anyone that is having recurrent miscarriages or that has had issues with getting pregnant or that has been having pregnancy and has been losing it, refer the person to the hospital. You need to see a good gynecologist so that these things will be carried out. Thank you for watching to this point. If you are not subscribed to my page, please subscribe for more medical tips. Then follow me on Facebook at Obijoy Talks with Dr. Adazel, TikTok and Instagram at Obijoy Talks with Dr. Adazel, and on YouTube at Nkiruka Bridget at Obijoy Talks with Dr. Adazel. See you next time. Please hit the notification button. I'll be waiting for you next time. Thank you.